Hey, what's going on, guys? Ara here, and welcome back to the Pit Lane Podcast, episode 99 today, to review the Russian Grand Prix with you, your host, myself, Arav, Callum, and Tom. Guys, what do we make of that Russian Grand Prix? Probably one of the best uh, Russian Grand Prix at Sochi we've, we've had since it came onto the F1 calendar, really, uh, for the kind of initial first third, I guess, of a Stappen show. A uh, good start from Leclerc as well. And then towards the end, we had a lot of controversy as the race ended with the race results between the Mercedes guys. But what do you guys make of it overall? You, you literally took the, the sentence out of my mouth, the fact that it was um, the, probably the best race we've ever had at Sochi, actually. I really enjoyed it. Lots of overtaking. I think the extended DRS zone did its job. Uh, plenty of overtaking. And even the cars, even the the dirty wake and everything, it still produced some fairly good uh, racing. Yeah. And, yeah, it, it has uh, boiled up plenty of talking points, which always bodes an OK race as well. And it showcased some pretty good talent. For example, the likes of Verstappen and Charles Leclerc, who put in some exceptional weekends, and but in terms of the championship, it's pretty much almost been the final nail in the coffin when it comes to, um, well, not pretty much the final nail, but we're getting yeah. close to well, picking up that hammer, put it that way. Well, yeah, because me and Tom talked about the, the yep. uh, Tom came up with the analogy of having the dagger in and you're twisting it. This is pretty much the twist, and then adding oh, Callum's Tom. adding Callum's thing, we twisted it. We've taken the ham, we've taken a hammer, and then we pounded it even harder into the body. Uh, pretty much a fifty point over a fifty point lead now. So uh, we're literally just turning it now for fun. Just just keep yeah. on turning that thing. Yeah, it's it's done. <laughs> he's already dead. Leave him alone. He's already dead. Yeah, Just yeah. Literally, it. he's you already know. dead. Stop doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> literally, that, that was literally for the for the ending of the Mercedes switch. Pretty much, it was you could do the commentary as Bottas broke early and how went through. Like he's already out of the championship. Pretty much, just I bet stop. Someone will probably do that now. Someone will probably overlay that. They audio should. On top, and they should tweet the it. Tweet it to me, and I will retweet it. Literally, yeah, just no, be I like, well. Vettel's already dead. Just stop. <laughs> because yeah. they didn't need to do that. We'll get to that pretty soon because we'll do team by team. But yeah, mm. it was a pretty pretty sweet Russian Grand Prix for what a Russian Grand Prix can be. But definitely a Mercedes circuit. Mercedes have won every single Russian Grand Prix, including the one about 50-odd years ago <laughs> when they were... What was it? Um, no, no, it was like 100 years ago. Oh, right, yeah, 100. Yeah, 100. When the, What was it? The, the team was... 1913. Um, 1914. The team was just called Benz or whatever. And like obviously. big Benz, and and they, and and they won it, and then obviously Mercedes and Benz kind of combined, and so technically, literally, they've won. They've had a winning streak around Russia for over a hundred years or something. So <laughs> it literally is a Mercedes OP circuit. But let's go to team by team then, and get straight to that juicy business because it's uh, the one-two Hamilton Bottas. And that controversial thing, I don't think is that controversial in a way because I wasn't too surprised, but still the sentiment reigns strong that Bottas was going to probably win that one. He was on for it. Hamilton was struggling with blistering and Vettel was closing up. So James Vols got on the team radio and said, look, Hamilton's got blistering. Can you let him buy? And they did. Hamilton won the race. Even Hamilton, apparently, on the at the end of the race, was on the team radio saying, can we switch this round? And they were like, nah, negative. We're too close now to the end where Vettel's too too close to make the switch. And on the podium, Hamilton let Bottas on the podium. He looked fucking pissed off. What do, like You two, what do we make of that? Like, Are you guys in uproar? Is it like you, like me, like not surprised too much? Or like, what are your thoughts? First of all, I would like to say the race was good. Um, I also agree with the best Russian Grand Prix we've had. Second of all, um, I agree and disagree with you at the same time, Arav, because, yeah, you can see it happening, but at the same time, I didn't think it was going to happen because Toto, Wolf, and Mercedes have been so, no, these guys are racing. Like, the, right, the yeah, one they yeah. did at Germany was a one-off because of the circumstance of the race and because they had to wrap up the one-two. And like Toto was saying, they're free to race. And the, pretty much the first time, They've, like, I think it was literally just since the last race, they were asked about it because of the Singapore race and how that went. Yeah. They, they, just, said, they, they just said, no, they're free to race, they can do whatever they want. And the first race, they've already switched them around. And it was a pretty painful switch around because 
just the way Bottas had to really get out of it on the back straight and just yeah, yeah. painfully let him through. It wasn't even like a, a smooth transition on a, on a straight or something. It wasn't like um, a, oh no, he's slipped on the throttle. He's, <laughs> oh no, oh. what a move. <laughs> he's Crofty's <laughs> ideal overtake. Oh, he's gone up the inside. He's actually made oh, him stick yeah, for no. once. Actually, yeah, you know, yeah, to be away. fair, I suppose every, how many times has Crofty said he's going for a move when he's about 10 car lengths back? Exactly. This was literally from 10 car lengths back. It could have actually made been it one work. of them ones. <laughs> yep. it, I think the reason why so much controversy has been made up is A, it's because obviously Ferrari fans have been very against it, thinking that Bottas has basically been basically lift, like, had the championship in his hands and gone, here, Lewis, <laughs> I have it all the way and you, you, we'll make sure we, we keep it. And also because it didn't look like Ferrari were ever going to challenge Mercedes at all this weekend and that proved the moment that all undercut Hamilton during the pit stops and then Hamilton instantly re overtook took him again. Mm. That's when you knew that Mercedes had a bit of pace up their sleeve. So the fact that they had to make that decision, even yeah. though Ferrari really wasn't challenging them on, in, on paper, they really weren't challenging them at yeah. all, even though but there was only maybe two seconds behind. Towards the end, Vettel was like four and a half behind Bottas. They could have easily switched their background, no problem. Mm. Um, they could have done the Hungary style, literally last corner switch. Well, yeah. the thing is... I could see it from a mile off because the way Bottas let Hamilton through, I said to my dad when he was watching the race together, I was like, I don't think this is done yet. I think they're going to maybe switch him back. I think this is because they're under threat because of the Stappen in front, Vettel behind, and there might be some threat there. So I think that in my head straight away, I was like, they're going to surely they're gonna do hungry. Surely they're not going to have Lewis come home first and Bottas second and switch it just like that. And they actually did stick to it, which surprised me. I'm honest, it did surprise me. Um, whether it be negative or positive, I don't really... I don't really fall on either side of that because it's not a good thing or a bad thing. I understand why they did it. I don't... Do I agree with it? No, but I understand. Was it necessary? No. So there's a lot of like... Yeah. Eh. I mean, you know, like, Bottas, there was a It made no sense. Yeah, like, basically, the, the short way of putting it is it made no sense, but it's justified because of the championship situation, basically. Well, there's even a picture of Bottas looking at the rear tyres of Hamilton after the race. Like, he, like, just leans over just to kind of, like, almost be like, how mm. bad's that blistering on those tyres then, huh? How, how bad yeah. was that? That was a issue? brilliant gift, that was, of in yeah. pushing Hamilton's car. But the, the blistering didn't look that bad, but they say that the reason he did get his blistering was because they messed up Hamilton's strategy initially by letting Vettel by. Then he had to cook his tyres getting past him, albeit he did get past him. Yeah. And then there was a very, very small blister on that left rear. But that was enough for Mercedes to go, oh my God, it might blow up. We need to, we need to get Bottas in there. So yeah. then Hamilton can slow down and Bottas is a buffer. But it yeah. did seem that after yeah. all the bad luck that Bottas has had this season and he's still winless, I believe. I that, yes. That's yeah. the point you make. Yeah, that and the with championship. Bottas, um, this, the team all just felt harsh because... I saw some tweets and people were saying like, oh, if only Bottas had been more competitive over the season or been, you know, closer to Lewis, then they wouldn't have switched him. But the fact is, up until the halfway point of the season, Bottas was as good as Hamilton in the first half of the season for me. And it's the fact that he had such a good start and got so many potential wins taken away that the chance he had now, it kind of... This one hurts more it, for him. Yeah, it definitely hurts more. Like, if it happened last year, it wouldn't have hurt so bad. But yeah, well, Because he was that. never in the championship race. But this year, it's like... It's that, and it's not crucial for Hamilton's championship fight no, that he won that race. Um, mm. It's very different to when Germany, when I tweeted about mid-race when Kimi was holding Vettel up. And I tweeted out, and people got really... Like they backlashed at the at the comment, but I thought it was completely correct. Of like, why are they doing this? Why don't you swap it? Like Raikkonen doesn't need yeah. to get a t at Germany. Raikkonen getting a token win, which it was basically a token win at that point in the season, did not matter more than Vettel getting that win at Germany. Whereas mm -hmm. this would have been basically, it's not even a token win at this point. It's basically just kind of like, oh, he's just winning a race because Hamilton's already got the championship pretty much yeah. in his back pocket and in Germany. Both of the Ferraris on differing strategies. Literally, as well. yeah. Fresh Mercedes tires. were on the exact same strategy. Mm -hmm. There was nothing to really split there, exactly, apart yeah. from the fact that Bottas led into turn one because he got put it on pole by, what was it, about a tenth and a half. So there wasn't really much to split yeah. the two, so it's a bit two of a, drivers. Yeah. Different scenario. But you've got to say, but other than that, like people have been, it's proper backlash and everything. I'm pretty sure it's going to get swept under the, under the carpet quite quickly. Part, part no, of I think, a, I think Hamilton is about to win the championship. Yeah, Pretty I think much. the fact the fact these so close to the championship is sweeps under the carpet a bit. Um, it's quite interesting though over the season, really. Team orders wise, Fry really you could argue 
their past demons have come to haunt them. We mentioned it before on the podcast, but you know they've had their chances, especially like we mentioned Germany. Um, you know, the, a point was made. He was behind Ruggen for like nine laps, Sebastian. If he, you know, if, if they just done the switch normally, those tires might have been in a bit better shape, and he may have not actually gone off the track at the at the Sachs hairpin. Yeah. And you know that's the championship defining sort of that's twenty five points that all could really do with right now. So. Um, yeah, Mercedes have not hesitated at any time to pull the trigger. If anything, they've actually called the team order and then after thought to themselves, mm. have I done the right thing? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's they've a act- weird it's one, like, isn't it? It's, it's, it's weird. It's the other way around. But it's and almost Luke like that Smith. killer instinct of like, we yeah, need definitely. to do everything for the championship. Killer. We need to put mm. all our eggs into this basket to get in the championship. And then after they're like, oh, actually, I've, uh, looking at the maths, we, we, he's got a huge lead. Why do we do that? Yeah, and uh, like Luke Smith made a good point on Twitter today, saying, "If Ferrari had done that switch, would how much more uproar would there have been on on Twitter?" And to be honest mm. with you, I think there would have been quite a bit more, just Reckon. because it's Ferrari and because of their past antics. People, well, and it, uh, this is what I'm saying. I think this is what if Ferrari was in the same Germany scenario, points about them as making well. the call. Yeah, maybe. I, 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 think, I genuinely think if Vettel was that clear, if, they if it was it. The, if it was Vettel still chasing Hamilton for the championship, I would basically put a big middle thing to anyone kicking up a fuss to right, yeah. uh, saying Raikkonen let Vettel alive. through if Vettel mm. was still chasing but if, Vettel, Vettel, chasing, if Vettel was the one comfortable for the championship then obviously mm. yes you should just let Kimi win like they should let Bottas win it bodes down to how comfortable Hamilton is now the fact that he is two DNFs and you can still win the championship because easily I'll, I'll tell you something a straight fight. dare I say I'll, if the roles were reversed and it was Ferrari in Mercedes position I don't think they would have switched them around Probably I don't think have. they would have. No, no, no. I don't, I don't think they would have switched. Considering how they let Kimi do his thing at Monza as well, when they already told him into that race weekend that he was being let go. Yeah. I actually think they would have actually let Raikkonen win if the roles were reversed. So, um, yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's intriguing. German it's intriguing. efficiency maybe, but... I do, I do want to tie this into some more conversation though. Are Fry read the fastest car anymore? No. Because the last couple of races... Well, not Russia. Like, Russia was literally... No, Mercedes but Singapore was as well. The like, car. Yep, Singapore, they mm, fixed their issues. Nowhere. And then uh, before Singapore, it was Monza. Yeah. But everyone thought that... Ferrari Faster, but they yeah. absolutely murdered their tyres around their competitive Mercedes. The thing is, I think it boils down to... Because, you know, like it used to be... Well, I mean, pretty much all season and all the hybrid era has been pointing towards, oh, the, it's the engine, like engine. And then, obviously, this season, we've gone, oh, well, Ferrari's in, improved their engine and now they're on pace. But the thing is now is I feel like Mercedes and Ferrari have pushed the boat so far out with the engines that now it is boiling down to the performance packages bring in mm. different bits of aero. For example, Mercedes with their new rear wing. Not sure if they actually used it. Apparently, they didn't use the new, new rear wing or some new part that they bought to this weekend. But what they mean is it's now boiling down to the aero parts, which is kind of what I like. I'm glad oh, you're yeah, no, returning I'm back with to that. the aero. I know, Arav, you're very much in that camp as well. But we are returning back to the aero where literally every weekend we're seeing different parts in the cars in the same way Red Bull are as well. And we're seeing peaks and troughs in their performance. And mm. it does make, make each race weekend quite entertaining. So this is why I felt like Mercedes have t- stretched it out a little bit. Same way back in, was it Silverstone when I think that like Ferrari had a new floor and that's why they basically just, they, they did wipe the floor, not clean, yeah. but they, they did make a significant step forwards. And it is a, yeah. very much a straight well, development Also, that's when they found that thing, which I mentioned about the fuel, which is sort of yes. given the edge in the last, yeah. like they, that arrived in Austria apparently. And then obviously they were quick at Austria. Um, just quick on the Red Bull but Red Bull had much better tyre management around there um, they were faster in Silverstone faster in Hockenheim uh, Hungary as well yep. but then even then Hamon popped up in the wet and controlled the race on Sunday I think also there's this whole thing of um, in the community of because Ferrari had a couple of good races and everyone was like oh they're the fastest car now and yeah. everyone just completely forgot about what Mercedes have done for the last four and a half years and like they've just completely throwing them away is like, oh, they're not the fastest anymore. But they've literally, in the last three or four races, you, you can see why they've won what they've won yeah. because they've just reshuffled everything <clears throat> at developed Ferrari. And for me, they're back on top again because they're and better also, in every department. Tire wear, uh, performance, yeah. over one lap, race pace. But you can also point out, we've I think we've spoke about this a couple of times, the fact that Ferrari haven't 
taken the weekends where they are the quickest and capitalised. For oh, example, yeah. Yeah. Sport, totally. were there, the wet qualifying basically sealed their fate before even race day had come along. And then obviously they get to the races where Mercedes are the fastest and they can't capitalise. They just never seem to capitalise on any sort of issues that Mercedes have, mm. be it inter-team battles or strategy mistakes. They just can't seem to do it on paper. Mm. Um, which, I mean, ties quite nicely into Ferrari. I mean, we've got yeah, lots to speak I mean, about speaking those of still. Which um, and you can't say, like, Vettel... You, I, I think pretty much that Ferrari was pushed to its absolute pace. And Vettel, I think that's one the maximum that car could have came out. And Today. he did have the one chance. Did very up. well. But then did make a mistake. And that lock-up was critical. Because he yes. was like six tenths behind Bottas, he would have had one chance to get him on our home straight. Instead, because of that mistake, that put Hamilton on the back of him on that straight. And then the best scrap of the race, you could say, scrap, not overtake, difference mm. there. Best scrap of the race occurred. Um, Vettel on the very limit of what is legal, you could say, with the yeah, one yeah. and a half sort of moves to the right, because he sort of went right, was still going right, but then increased that right turning more towards the end um yeah. but every, even, to be fair even on sky they were very like that's fine like Duresta, herbert crofty they're all i thought saying, it was all right because Ham- i thought well, it was, okay I thought it was well. all right just because hamilton picked up the position two corners later yep same yeah thing. i didn't think any sort of fuss needed to be made i was like yeah maybe if he was put in the wall or maybe if he's sitting now behind him for another 10 laps then yeah fair enough but he got i feel like hamilton him. made the radio <laughs> call out of um, just frustration because of the strategy and how he came well, out it's behind the same with it when, when Vettel um, was spam in Monza. You just said yeah. things, but everyone went, no, there's no there's no need to really say it because you're, you're clearly in the wrong. Or you, there's clearly mm. an obvious thing here. But and there's a great still. move from Hamilton to get the job done. It was brilliant. I've never also, seen such good racing at Russia. Oh, yeah, no, I agree. And also, I think it makes another point of, you know, the whole mirror debate and how they're thinking of changing them. Because Vettel said in the post-race interview, he couldn't actually see Hamilton through turn three. He didn't know where he was. Some sort yeah. of blind spot, and that's pretty. Shocking. That's pretty scary. Like that's pretty yeah. shocking. So, um, yeah, all in all, a great little scrap, and uh, I enjoyed it. Rocking nowhere this weekend. So really, it's just felt we're trying to do what you could. Um, again, you know, you could argue that mistake into turn thirteen, one too many for me, and I think our view as well. We spoke about this before. The championship was really decided, but this just, like we said, just turns the knife Even one step further. further. Gets the hammer out. Um, moving on then to Red Bull Verstappen P5 Ricardo P6 Ricardo mm. absolutely shown up to be the fraud uh, in the first third of the race because Verstappen was flying from P19 to P6 or 5 uh, on those soft tyres um, yeah. he was uh, he was he was channeling the the 2016 Brazil vibes then literally yeah, like was. just mm. that was, was insane like yeah. those first seven laps were absolutely I mean I know it is Formula A versus Formula B but even still like that was an incredible drive. And I, will, I, will I mean, say we that. can't shit on Ricardo too much. No, just because, because he did have the front wing damage. Yeah, he did have some damage. I did not even realise he had a hole in his front yeah. wing until he came in because the, the, the dark blue camouflages yeah. with the black, like with the tyres and just that. Yeah. Because it's dark through the front I wing. I was in, shitting in that on him during that race. I was it. saying to myself, like, God, How's Ricardo? Ricardo? shit. And then I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. front wing. And apparently that was 30, 40 points down for So I was like, okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah he missed why. an entire cascade like this as well. And not just the lack of downforce, it's also the, the, the imbalancing of the car. The yeah. fact on one side, you're so off, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But because even I was like, how's Verstappen done this? That is, this, this is incredible. And to be fair, it still was incredible regardless of Ricardo. I think even well, with yeah, Ricardo I, without damage. I mean, how did he get the him. damage? Like, was it daybreak? Turn one. Um, they never tried to replay a bit. It was just turn one. I think it was Van Dorn potentially. They said apparently he, was, he went to go overtake Van Dorn and then he saw the debris, but by the time he saw it, he'd hit it. So he, mm, did, he couldn't right. really do much about I mean, it. So it's like, it's like maybe like half. Half he could have maybe done something about mm. it. Half it not was just, really. Uh, it was really unfortunate. Turn one. It it's there. the usual or turn two. Yeah. Um, but. Also, I think it's worth pointing out, Verstappen showcased, especially because when he did his pit stop, as good as his first in was, I think it's worth mentioning, the soft tyre was a brilliant race tyre today. Yeah, it was. It was incredible. Like, when Verstappen went to Aldra's at the end, he would zero pace. Ricardo did one fastest lap like, with those new tyres. That's all they've they done. It's almost a little bit gutting that they didn't bring the super soft, just because... Mm. The fact that we're so used to taking the softest tyres to Russia and they'd use the so- the two softest and they could just do a one-stop. And the one race where the two softest tyres would not be able to do a one-stop, they'd bring yeah. a step higher, harder compound 
and then they can use that with the one start, which is Recently, a little bit annoying. They've got that wrong when it comes to they're, when they're trying to miss a compound out to make it interesting. They they miss, they do it the wrong way around. It has to be they've done it a really they've soft yeah, they've done it, they've done it to a point where ones. every to, every basically every team can play the stubborn card like they did Monaco. Of basically being like, right, we'll just use the hardest tire then for a lot of the yeah. race and make yeah. the one stop work. Because if they'd had the hyper and then supers ultras, the super would be too slow in Q2 for the big boys to maybe even get through because the the other guys behind on the hyper. Yeah. That they yeah. even they would have to go like everyone would have to go hyper in Q2, so then everyone gets an even playing field, and then you do get that benefit of you know, trying to get those hypers to last, but others start on supers and they're doing incredible lap times. But when you have the ultras there, like the top four, basically, they all, they all, they all qualified on ultras in Q2. You know, yeah. it kind of, eh, it ruined it a bit. But um, it was a little the ultras bit, yeah, and the hypers just, were not good race shame. tires at all. At Which all. It's good to see. But I like that though. We, there needs to be good qualifying tires and good race tires. They just need to find that balance. I agree and, and disagree. They almost got it. It's still, the last half of the race was predictable. You could see Hamilton was not going to attack Verstappen. Bottas was not going to attack Hamilton. Vettel just could not get close enough to Bottas to attack him. And then Raikkonen and Ricciardo were just not fast enough. So literally the top six for the last half of the race was just predictable. Why yeah. would Hamilton risk attacking Verstappen unless if he really had to um, when he's controlling the race? And Vettel can't lay a glove on the Mercedes. You know, um, That's where the sort of... I was hoping that the blistering would be a sign that they must have go for a two-stopper. Make it yeah. a bit more interesting, something. But um, that's me saying that you know I'm a fan of the one stoppers. But uh, it's hard yeah. to um, overall speak about Red Bull. I don't know if Arav, you've got anything to say about them, but it's hard to speak about that because they have used this weekend to set up the next two weekends. Well, yeah, they said they're going to Mexico be was their best chance of a, a win uh, to end off this season. So even Verstappen yeah. was like, I turned down the engine because there was no point of pushing it flat out. Um, so he gave up with trying to even catch Raikkonen maybe so uh, yeah I mean just tactically they played that from the start and qualifying with the engine penalties their Mantor also so unfortunate but that's the way the, the Renault and the Honda kind of thing had to go uh, they just haven't still they're still not at that point where they can do a good enough job over the course of the season with the limited units that are allowed um, mm. but hopefully that means in Mexico we do get a good chance of seeing the Red Bulls right up there that would be really really fun to see because Verstappen was obviously on fire at the Mexican Grand Prix um, so that would be really cool to see. Well, even but, Japan as well. He was pushing Lewis right to the end. Yeah, that too so, as well. So we'll see about that. It's going to be interesting to see how shout. the Ferrari v Merck thing is at Japan. But uh, moving on then to the best of the rest and pretty much the winner of Formula B, Charles Leclerc with an absolutely <laughs> sensational performance this weekend in qualifying right up there. And then obviously helped out a little bit with engine penalties, but still did the job when it mattered. That was ridiculous, by the way. But that was crazy. P7 then on the road for the race. Really, and really then, great and job. And the move of the race. And, the move and the yeah, and a stunning move on the outside. Really, really great work against all uh, against the person where obviously you'd be like, this is going to be very, very tight yeah. between Kevin cheeks. Magnussen. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he made it work. He stuck his guns, and uh, this time Magnussen was one sucking his own ball. So <laughs> he's down to P8, and Ocon, nine. <laughs> Ocon P9, and Perez P10. Um, I don't know. There's not. I I don't have much to add for Force India Haas, but I mean Leclerc. Yeah, just another sensational weekend. For There's him. only so many superlatives you can give Leclerc because he's yeah. literally proven why he needs that. And Ferrari it's great seat right now. He's signed for Ferrari, and the pressure has not got to him at all. Like the no. eyes are on him even more. I'm like, oh, this is the new Ferrari driver for next year, and he's still doing the bit. He's doing. I bits. can't lie. I'm going to be rooting for him hard next year. Not that he'd oh, be my be. favorite driver, but I'll be fully behind him. I'll be more behind him than Sebastian. Um. You know, drive for Ferrari, that's something I'm looking forward to because I can't, I've never been able to get behind Sebastian just because, I mean, I, I, I hated the guy in Red Bull. You know, I've grown to like him in Ferrari a bit, but even then, I don't, you can't just hate someone and then dislike someone. It doesn't, it's not a natural thing. Yeah, yeah. But with Leclerc, you just can't hate the guy, you know, so I'm looking forward to. Oh, well, yeah, I'm double looking forward to it because. Yeah, I'm Lewis done and Vettel to the limit. It's gonna be great. I think for our, it's just the lineup itself. I'm gonna love it because uh, I, I I kind of grew, I start I didn't like Vettel at the very start of his Red Bull career, but I grew I grew to like him through 2012 to 2013, mm. uh, especially then in 2013. I was like, okay, fair play. Um, and then even and then yeah, so like those two together, obviously us three, we've always been fond of Leclerc as a driver. Yeah. So as a pairing for me personally, it's gonna be really fun to watch. Uh, and it seems like they have a good relationship anyway, anyway as well, like a mentee kind of mentor sort of thing. So that'll be fun. 
But um, yeah, I mean, the rest of the top 10, then Magnuson, like two four seniors, like I said, um, not too much to say from me. I don't know about you guys. Um, the four seniors had so that interesting yeah. team orders um, situation over the race. They were both taking turns to get past Magnuson. And uh, they were trying to Which do it. fair play. I like that Force India can do that. It was interesting when Perez did come out and go, oh, why did you let me throw? And then do you know what instantly pops into my head was Canada 2017. I think, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. when I went, oh, why didn't you just let us race? Why didn't you just let us race? Come on. Why did... And it, he's so hypocritical. I don't like Perez sometimes on track. Like He's a very sensible driver in terms of looking after his tyres, but sometimes the way he, he... I don't know, his etiquette towards his teammates just a little bit fake I was very hard. Hard. Just a little bit a little bit stupid but yeah. fair play to force India for giving Ocon the position back and not and all that and um Magnuson pretty much out driving Grosjean all weekend which was because everyone kept going all oh season. yeah Magnuson's a threat yeah all, yeah all season but this, this weekend everyone kept going oh well they kept asking Sauber's and force India yeah. who's your main threat and well, actually that's going, one thing Magnuson Magnuson but in no, between not Grosjean. in between podcasts has confirmed that it's going to be K-Mag and yes. Grosjean for next year, which, uh, which is interesting. Yeah, uh, I was like, "Come on, okay, you're the odd one out doing the kind of oh, we'll stick with the same one." But okay, Boring. then. Um, <laughs> but of course, Grosjean's kind of redeemed himself with a, with a few good races in the last kind of second half. Obviously, after a very shaky and slow start to the season, mm. K Mag was always going to stay for me. Um, so it's, re- it's really a question mark over Grosjean. I guess has to. I guess they want to go with stability. I guess. Yeah. Well, stability. How stable Magnussen can be. I mean. How many drivers complained about Magnussen during that race? It was easily three, at uh-huh. least. Yeah, but Which I think is... the points tally speak for itself, and that's what yeah, they want. So exactly, can't um, complain. They'll have something to work for next season. Um, but yeah, it was an interesting debate. You know, the whole Force India trying to get past that Haas car, with knowing that they wanted to be ahead of the Renault of uh, Nick Hulkenberg, who was the man that finished behind. Grosjean actually in the end. Yeah, so he wasn't even quite surprising. Yeah, yeah, they were yeah. proper shitting themselves over Gro- uh, Hulkenberg, but yeah. He Grosjean. was nowhere near. Hmm. Like yeah, yeah. Renault was nowhere at all this week. Renault was, really well, dropped off. Science had, had his entire time. race ruined because <coughs> his entire barge board on the right was completely yeah. off. I didn't realize that. I didn't um, re- like the FOM like, should have picked that up. There was a, that was a lot of side by side comparison, and just like you can clearly see, oh, there's an entire literally whole plank missing from Science's car. So he was literally had, he had no chance that entire weekend to even do anything, pretty much. Um, so that was really unfortunate. But yeah, Renault. Yeah, to, I, I hope they're starting to put a lot of stuff in for next year now because they are they have dropped off a bit. They did trial a 2019-esque kind of wing uh, in FP1, so it does kind of spark a little bit of a rumour and kind of like insight. Maybe they are really now putting all their eggs yeah. into next year and they've kind of forgotten about the end of the season almost. Kind of like what Toro Rosso usually do every single year apart from the engine side of things because Honda is still pushing for the engine upgrades, but Toro Rosso mm. is a chassis. Usually they kind of just give up by the end of the season because they put all their focus on yeah. next year's car. Um, so hopefully that's I mean, that's pretty the much case. all the midfielders think is given up now. I know Force India have pretty much stopped their development. Renault have pretty much stopped it as well. I'm not going to... Well, I bet Haas are struggling with money probably, so they probably won't be developing this year's car anymore. So it's... Um, well, I heard Force India are still going, but... Now with the more recent controversy, uh, with the buyout, you know the twist in the saga that, uh, just before the weekend, apparently that might now once again get put on hold. But apparently they were going to bring a raft of upgrades because they can, really? with the results they've been yeah because with the results they've been putting in and the cars getting better and better, you know they get they're edging towards that fourth best team again, and they still think they could potentially still get you know right. a top six finish. Well, if I, they I keep know on their pushing. team principal on Sky today said that that's the last of their upgrades. Oh, so I don't know. Yeah, Maybe. apparently that is the last of their upgrades now. And oh, the, apparently enough. they say on average they outscore their competitors like by five points per race on average. I mean, that mm. is averages. So yeah. they're just kind of resting on their stats rather than pushing their car even more and being left behind in the development race. But yeah, it's pretty much going to be all the same in the midfield. But Renault has definitely slumped um, in time. terms of development recently, especially considering where they have been earlier on in the season. Hulkenberg um, took a slight dig at that in uh, post qualifying, yeah. saying, um, "You know, if you snooze, you lose in F1." He pretty much said, referring yeah. to the fact that Renault have not really been doing much. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, um, I don't know whether we spoke about Ericsson in thirteenth. I mean, he got to- he got his first Q three appearance since twenty fifteen, I want to say. Yeah, and then <laughs> that was about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> pretty much, but that was only because of that dire Q two session. Didn't he get Q3 like, earlier on, like a couple of races ago? 
No, apparently he, he hasn't had Q3 since oh, 2015. Okay. I he got really close. Wrong. I think he got very close. Yeah, I yeah, think he got I like a Q11 or something. Yeah, but either way, uh, it was only because of the Q2 session, which was pretty diabolical. Mm. I don't think we've ever, I don't think we've ever seen that happen. Yeah. In this, in I mean, it was, to be I've honest, it's funny. It's really funny in an F1 way that the reason why Q2 was like that in a big way was because of the very rule they brought in to try and get away from the ridiculousness of, you know, in 2015 and 2016 when we used to hear he's got a 65 place grid penalty. Yeah. They brought in the rule, obviously, to be like, okay, if you have over 15 places, it's now just called back of the back grid, of grid and you get sent to the back, and that simplifies things. But because of that, that very rule to get away from the silliness, we got a different type of silliness of, okay, all five of these guys know they're back of the grid. So yeah. there's no point going out because unlike uh, before where you could go set a time and you could get ahead of someone, even with the penalties at the very back of the grid... With this new back of the grid system, the only way you can get ahead of someone is by going out early in FP1, effectively when those new engine parts were first used. And that's why Red Bull and Toro Rosso were lined up. Red Bull, Red Bull, Toro Rosso, Toro Rosso. At yeah. the very start of FP1, for 10 minutes they sat there overcooking their engines just so they could go out to basically set themselves up for the grid on Sunday. So it's a bit of a weird situation that like literally like they got their grid slots basically at the very start of Friday FP1 Friday morning yeah, Craig, yeah. Craig. Bit, a bit stupid but silliness breeds silliness in Formula 1 that's exactly yeah it's, it's one rule sure. that got rid of another silly rule <clears throat> and ultimately that's to do with anyway the fact that like I said Renault and Honda are still not at that standard yet where they can yeah. keep the three components mm. going for a lot of the different engine parts um, so they still have a, they still you can see they have a lot of work to do still to actually make them go the distance compared to Ferrari yeah. And Mercedes. Mm. Um, also, round... on the topic oh, of Ericsson, um, obviously we didn't announce in the podcast, but he this week got confirmed to be getting replaced by Antonio yeah. Giovinazzi for next season in the sub, yep. which is something I did say a couple of weeks ago. Um, I also said on Twitter, some people on Twitter were like, how are you even saying this? Ericsson brings in so much cash to the team. And I said, I, I kept on saying, not anymore, because they don't need it. They're very well yeah. backed by well, Alfa Romeo. Third driver, so he still yeah. gets his sponsors. Yeah, I've been saying forever. Like Alfa Romeo bring a lot of money. Like I think a yeah. lot more money than people like actually think they do. Because they're, no, they're but not... it's also the people that bought them out. You know, mid season 2017. I think it's called Longbo Financing. Yeah, also yeah that, as well. but I think it's more Alfa Romeo now. I think because because of the way also, that takeovers course, yeah. happened of like the rebranding. I think now Alfa Romeo probably pump in way more money than Long Longbo yeah. ever did. Um, like they wouldn't like, say no to extra cash as well as Ericsson staying as a third driver yeah. so and then like I said it's literally car. perfect PR Italian team now with Alfa Romeo's links obviously it's still mm. half kind of you know this still what links to being Swiss but it's pretty <coughs> much like a half Italian team you've got Italian driver literally like next year especially at Monza at the Italian Grand Prix, they are going to love having Giovinazzi yeah. there as a PR yeah. machine. Also, it's good to have an Italian driver back in F1. First one since Jano Trulli, I think. Yep. So, um, yeah, it's yeah. been a while. And Before that, we used to have, you know, Trulli, uh, Fisichella, Liuzzi. You know, we've had our fair share, mm -hmm. but it's been a while since we've had one. So, yeah. it's a good it's thing. Good. I think, yeah, I think, the, I think it'll be a good feel. And hopefully, you know, obviously, I've been uh, always very fond of Gio. Hopefully, he can kind of settle in. He did have a bit of a shaky, uh, you know, time when he was in the car at Sauber. That's definitely something he even had at Haas when he did some tests. He, he basically just needs to get comfortable with the car really quickly because everything else, I feel like he's kind of got some natural talent to him. Yeah. But I think it's getting comfortable with the car. He needs to quickly make sure he does that at the very start. Well, of he knows season. the engine. He's going to have, gonna have a good teammate as well. Yeah, he's got a very good teammate. teammate. Yeah, good, good mentor. Th it's pointed out that he's, the I think, the only driver to drive. I, mean, I might be wrong, actually, but I think he's the only, the only driver to drive all three um, owners of the uh, Italian Italian Ferrari engine. Um, yeah, in he's every been the car. Ferrari, he's been driven the Haas, every... been the Sauber. Yeah, he's, so had he's, he's had he's got plenty of experience with the engine at least. But mm. other than that, hopefully he has a slightly better start to the season than what he did in 2017 when he binned it in the wall. Yeah, in the straight line. So. Um, you yeah. cut some slack because I was in the wet. Yeah, you can yeah. do, but even still, yeah. that still doesn't that still doesn't make it any cheaper. No, like, yeah, yeah, he's down for definitely not. But know, yeah. um, I'll, 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 I will cut. Shall we briefly that. talk about the three teams that probably had probably the dire weekend? Yeah, of well, all let's quickly get Toros out of the way. Uh, break failure for both the cars. Gasly's on the same one. Lap. <laughs> yeah, on the same lap. Gasly's one was quite scary. Like he showed the video of him, like just literally flew, like going into turn four, like just out of nowhere. Goes. They both had a carbon yeah. copy, pretty much. Same um, thing. And then Williams. It's worth and... mentioning Kvyat. Oh, it's Kvyat resigned for Toro Rosso. 
Um, oh yeah, that as well. On yeah. loan. It's literally like the, uh, the you know the relationship sort of analogy sort of. where you keep going back to a toxic relationship. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. The difference yeah. is he's on loan there though, yeah. so I wonder if I have any pulling power in that. I'm not sure. Um, well, for, but that's not going to be in any sort of. Over for the car, sake of it, I do. Say. I'm starting to feel really bad for Hartley again. Like nothing he could have done today at all, really. No, no, no. it's really well, unfortunate for the guy. I do it's still unfor- feel like it's yeah. unfortunate. I love how many DNFs he's had. It, this it is on, it is unfortunate that he's he's literally had the worst luck this entire season. But then at the same time, you have those periods where he hasn't got any bad luck, and yet he's still off the pace. Like in what was it practice? Literally, there was a segment in the practice highlight video where, like, the the engineer was like, "Yeah, you're losing like five tenths to the other car, oh, i.e. Gasly." Yeah. And Hartley was like, "Yeah, I just can't carry as much speed." And the engineer was like, "It's under braking. You need to brake a lot later." So, like, he, he, he I, I, I'm half and half because I really do feel bad for him in that kind of sense of how much bad luck he is. But at the same time, when he doesn't have anything go wrong with his race, he just needs to step yeah. it up and actually do the job. So he needs one of those races, like literally now, Japan, USA, Mexico. He needs to bang in a good result yeah uh, I mean to be fair I think <clears throat> Gasly has raced it before whereas Harley hasn't so yeah, that's also true. one of them tracks that's well, a, that think, is actually one of them tracks yeah, but Gazi's got in the same way that Leclerc edge. has never raced at Russia before yeah he? he still got no yeah because they didn't do have to that year yeah true true so mm, that's true. a bullshit excuse really you can't actually, it, no, especially did, in Formula 1 did they no he did he did an interview and he said he's never raced there did he pretty not? much no, he said um, it in. He said it in. Didn't in last interview. year they have, you know, because um, because uh, what was it a GP three this year? They had this funny thing where they did qualifying in the dark basically because mm. of the misscheduling, and they said this happened last year with GP three. So did GP three go to Russia last year? Not F two though. I don't know, but I remember. Well, the Leclerc said in his interview that he's never raced there, so I'm not okay. Fair sure. enough. If he, I mean, he, if he's saying it, then he knows, yeah, obviously. I but think he said that. I think okay. Then not, that might be a funny thing that like GP3 had a rush around, but F, uh, GP2 back then did not. Maybe not. Um, so the, that's just it's a steep comparison. Leclerc is not. Oh, sorry, Hartley is not Leclerc. <laughs> I'm just saying. For is, the guy, no, it's just you I'm can't really say. Oh, turn yeah, but then that's just kind of like you're bringing excuses out for for his sake. But it is actually the comparable of you actually haven't driven the same circuit, and it's just a better driver comparison of Leclerc v Hartley. Then mm, um, yeah. he just needs the job. But to be fair, in my opinion, a more exciting thing would be if something someone like Verline got in alongside Kvyat. That would oh, yeah, be a tasty that. lineup. That would be a very tasty lineup. Or Vandal. <laughs> Well, Van Dorn said nah. Van Vandorn's pretty much... He said in an interview like pretty much before Russia that he's not even thinking of F1 anymore. Mm. He's like setting his sights on. He, he said he said he, in an interview he's got multiple choices, different teams have come to him, but pretty much for next year at least he's not setting his sights on F1 at all. Right. Okay. So I think you can carry him out of the picture. Unless unless someone like Torres comes to him with a surprise sort of offer and like... It's a really good deal for him, but the way he was standing in the interview is pretty much like, yeah, I've kind of accepted I'm not going to have an F1 drive. I've got this offer on the table for this category and this other category, and I'm just going to choose which one I want. Speaking yeah. of which, McLaren. McLaren shocker. Williams, nowhere. Absolute shocker. Um, I, I, you genuinely can't really say much about those two because they no, were nowhere. No, they weren't. One they thing weren't worth pointing out, Stroll, I give him credit, he slapped Sorok in this weekend. Yeah. He did, I think absolutely. he beat him like 30 seconds in the race. Which is quite the shock, actually, because I think short kit, especially my man's got a grandstand named after him already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, we said the same thing about Kvyat though when that got confirmed as well. True, but yeah, uh, you, it's hard. Is, to is, really is there a Petrov grandstand them. anywhere? No, no, but That's I know a lot of Petro- apparently there are Petrov because Russia wasn't on the uh, on the calendar when he was there so it doesn't yeah. matter it should be though like he's at, he's at a podium nah, he's, he's not a legacy he's, he's not got a legacy good enough yet <laughs> he had a podium he 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 beat Massa in a Caterham and Massa was in a Ferrari ah fam nah. everyone remembers that overtake <laughs> loved it but yeah you can't really speak about those two teams because it is pretty dire it's mm. uh, I, there's nothing to say <coughs> It's There's nothing to say. It's, a, it's, a big it's, it's so bad that it's making Callum die almost here. But I mean, so. I mean, like even Alonso said, like, I think his engineer yeah. was trying to be all really upbeat about oh, yeah. fighting for 14th. <laughs> yeah. I'm in 15th place. I don't. I'm care. 15th. <laughs> I, I do not care. give a shit. Yeah. Mate, Let me know do you see what position I'm in, bro? Yeah. Look at this. Yeah, yeah. This ain't good. This ain't On the same chief. line, did you see that funny part where the engineer to Riken was like, do the opposite of Hamilton? Riken was like, 
I but Hamilton's that. behind me. How do I know what he's <laughs> doing ahead of me? Again, with Vettel, the, under, the invisible undercut. The invisible, yeah. They were trying again. an invisible overcut. Of Back like, again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally like, okay, do what the car ahead of you is doing. But it's like, hang on. They're not ahead of me yet. Yeah, but the, and then the engineer like, puts the finger up to his head and goes, ah, ah. but they will be ahead of you yeah. after the pit stop. So yeah, think literally. about it in virtual terms. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it, but... That rounds out. Um, yeah, that rounds out the Russian Grand Prix then, and we're going to get into swiftly predictions then for the Japanese Grand Prix. I will say this though: there is a high, high chance that we don't do a podcast for the Russian uh, for the Japanese Grand Prix. Uh, big apologies for that, but the way it works out of the timing of the Grand Prix, um, Tom might be at work, and then myself and Callum might be busy, so we just can't make a promise. If we do do one, it will be like midweek afterwards, and hopefully there's some, I don't know, other juicier topics to talk about outside well, from the race. Well, it is Podcast 100, so hopefully it is very juicy. Yeah, hopefully it's a very juicy about. race, and hopefully there's uh, some other stuff to, juicy to talk about. But it is also, yeah, our 100th podcast, so at the same time, <laughs> I'm kind of also in a way of like, yeah, let's not rush it, and we'll do one in midweek and try and, I don't know, just kind of do something special, maybe talk about, I don't know, let us know in the comments below what you think we should do as a specialty. Maybe talk about previous good moments from the podcast or races or whatever, or talk more about I don't know, F1, I don't know, like, oh, I don't know, favourite F1 races gone by, or whatever, something like that. Sound off in the comments. For, yeah, sound, sound yeah. off in the comments. Well, but let's get well, into these predictions then for the Russian, uh, not Russian, <coughs> Japanese Grand Prix. There it Prix. is. You love Russia. You uh, love uh, Russia. Sor- Mon Sorokin, Mon Sorokin, yeah. podium, Listen, I'm, I'm just saying, your predictions have been the complete polar opposite. You were saying about Singapore being a cracker, turned out to be a wet paper bag, and this one, you, you said... Tweet me after the boring race has gone by because I'm on this train. Turns out to be a pretty decent race. So I'm, it wasn't, I'm yeah, but it, it was a say. good one by Russia standards. If you compare it to, a, if you, yeah, okay. I, I feel like if you compare it to right. an actual normal Grand Prix, it wasn't actually an insane one. It was a bit I like to judge it on if season. you've had an good. overtake for the lead. It was, like, uh, it was like a 6.5. Yeah, yeah, it was better than We went to that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah that's anyway. Pole position, Japanese Grand Prix. Callum, you haven't been here for two weeks. Go. Lewis Hamilton. All right. I'm after second that one, Chief. Lewis, I'm going to go with... Don't even um, don't even go uh, against... I'm, I'm going to go with Valshi Bottas. Go on, son. Go <laughs> on. Of all people. No, but of all people at Japan. <laughs> yeah, no, he's not going to... Hey, look, okay, yeah, I'll check Harris. my mind. Hamilton, Hamilton. Okay. All right. <laughs> right. It's okay. a qualifying circuit, Lu- pal. Lu- oh. Lulu's going <laughs> to smash Japan. Right. Top five. Go on, Callum. Go. Um, I'm going to say Hamilton, Verstappen, Vettel, Bottas, Ricciardo. Right. Hamilton, Vettel, Verstappen, Bottas, uh, Ricciardo. I'm going to go with Hamilton, Vettel, ooh, ooh, ooh. Raikkonen, Bottas, Verstappen. That's what I'm going with. Hmm. You shout on Verstappen, and I'm one in the Verstappen. I feel like he's going to do well. Yeah, no, I, feel I, like I think he's got great there. momentum now for the end of the season. I think... I've just realised I've made a rookie error. I've put Ricardo in the top five when we all know he's going to DNF. Yeah, exactly. Um, Two first, so have I. I think, um, I think me- looking forward, Mexico, I'm re- I really want Red Bull to turn up because I think, Actually, Max, like Max did last year, I think he can do something really great. I've got one swift change I want to make to my top five. I'm I'm going to extract Ricardo from that fifth place. Right. I'm going to put Gasly in there. Ooh, ooh. Gasly. Honda, Honda, Honda the home apparently, the home race. apparently, according to them, the engine upgrade they tested this weekend. Apparently, this makes that engine what Ron Dennis wanted five yeah. years ago. So basically, it's going to be and it's better than Renault. So basically, so, on the on the blueprints of the upgrade, it's not upgrade three two point yeah. one five yeah. it's upgrade home grand prix yes yeah, there's an upgrade five it's point the, oh. like it's, it's just five no, it's it literally just up. says run dennis edition yeah <laughs> well, the, it's literally that bring out the fireworks edition because yeah, it's a exactly. home race turn the fuck up like <laughs> this needs to be a mercedes v12 upgrade spark me up going on like they need to turn up i want to see a one two torosso for the honda it's called the honda japanese grand prix it's if Literally. Honda Torosso does not do well at this race, I will commit. This will be bad for them. I want them to do well because I don't want the Honda employees to be like, it's our race. Literally, it's called Honda Japanese Grand Prix. No, but and it's our like, cars it, like are I said, 18th. That's why I'm putting Gasly 5th. 
apparently the upgrade is pretty scary. It like it's a be big good. push. Hopefully. So Hopefully. until it like, goes pop. You know, you know, you know how like when Kamui got on the podium, they're like Kamui, Kamui. Yeah. I want, I want Gasly to come P5, and then Gasly waves at the crowd. They go Honda, Honda. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Pierre, Pierre. Oh, where's, the, where, where's the Brendan love? Come yeah. on. Br- Brendan. You didn't even put him in the top five. If you want to give no, him love, no. put him in your He's top sixth. five. He's sixth. Oh, oh, really? Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> right. Okay, on that note, on that hilarious bombshell, we're going to end this one then. Episode number 99. The next one is that big 100. Um, To be honest... Like much like F1, I think these kind of milestones <laughs> will never go great. So don't expect fireworks from episode 100. We're just happy to make it to 100. To be honest, I think lads. Um, yeah. Because I think when we started the podcast, we didn't think we'd get this far. Really, I, th- I think we thought, oh, we'll test out like a podcast. It might be fun. And I think uh, even though you know, some of the responses of the podcast lately have been a little bit wishwashy, I think we still enjoy talking about F1 on on a on a podcast like this. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you enjoy this one, hit that like button. Let us know what you thought in the comments below. Obviously, check us out. Links on screen. And you can check out our Patreon and our SoundCloud and iTunes. Links all below. So if you like what we're doing around here and you want to support us, especially on the eve of our 100th podcast, then you can check out the Patreon and get uh, support in there. You can get into our Discord server. We might, I probably will try and do something special maybe with the Discord server uh, for episode 100 with our Patreon uh, backers. But um, yeah, if finally, if you do want to get yourself like a desk chair or racing chair for F1 2018 or whatever or you know you're just in that school vibe but you want to have a bit more fun with a fun chair then you can check out GT Omega and use the code pitlane F1 but that's been this one to review the Russian Grand Prix we'll see you guys probably in about a week and a half probably for midweek <laughs> podcast for 100 hope to see you guys there till then hope you enjoy the rest of your day goodbye